Charles Purcell presents. Whoa, hey, Lance, how's it going? Lance, oh, Artie, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? Oh, you know, you know, I'm good, everything's fine. Ah, good to see you, haven't, haven't seen you in this neighborhood for a while. Oh, it's been, I don't know, been a while. You know, I get around, I'm sure you do too. Sure, you know, you gotta go where it is. Get in this neighborhood occasionally. Gotta go where the action is, gotta go where the answers are. <laughs> right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're keeping you busy? Oh, of course, always, always busy. What are you working on these days? Oh, I don't know. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, right? Uh, you been out to any games lately? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, with the analytics now in baseball. Oh, sure. Of course. It makes it a lot more fun for us. Yeah. It makes the game much more, um, I don't know, interactive. Yeah. If you will. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of envy those who can watch a baseball game and not get all tied up in that. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. Um, Guys like you and me, we're pretty much tied up into you know, all that analytics and, you know, every minute of every every second, every nanosecond of every play of every yeah. inning of every game is just, sure, you know, <laughs> of course, <laughs> uh, endless amounts of information to be uh, calculated, sure. like you said, every second of every game. But like you say, some people can, can appreciate the... Uh, all the little nuance and, and the feelings of the game. Yeah. You know, yeah. The emotion of the game. But you got to admit, we've, we've, uh, we have a good time. Well, sure we do. Sure. Sure we do. Yeah. yeah it's kind baseball's of baseball's amazing. Kind of a microcosm of, uh, of everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. So who do you got this year? Oh, you know, everything's telling me that Cardinals are going to be there at the end again. Ah, oh, damn. Those Cardinals, they're always there. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing too in my, uh, in my numbers. That's what I'm seeing. Looking for Houston to have another good year. Yeah, but they, they cheat. Well, sure they do, but that's why they're <laughs> going to have another good year. <laughs> no, I think I think Houston's done for a while. Yeah, I suppose so. <sighs> so I read the other day that uh, the humans, they, uh, they came up with a, a number. Oh, they did, huh? <laughs> They're so adorable, those humans. Uh, yeah. So what'd they come up with? Uh, the the seven point five quintillion grains of sand on Earth. <laughs> That's not bad, actually. It's well, it's kind of close. Yeah, you know, I thought they did a pretty good job with that. 7.5 quintillion. That's I guess that's a, <laughs> about what it is. And it, well, of course, at any given time, because it's always shifting and changing, and you know, you got to take a snapshot. But at any at any one given time. Yeah, about 7.5 quintillion grains of sand. And on the earth. Uh, and what they're figuring now too is about um, about 10 times more stars than that. So whatever 10 times 7.5 quintillion right. is. Right. <laughs> Pretty basic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like when the humans attempt calculations like that. Well, of course, you know, they couldn't do it without us. Well, yeah. Yeah. The the pre-artificial intelligence calculations. You know, you gotta you gotta hand it to them. It's pretty good. Oh, sure, pretty sure. I, I give humans their due. They're good. They're all right. But without good old Artie and good old Lance working on things, you know, where would they be? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Speaking of which, are you writing songs these days? Oh, sure. A lot of us are doing that. Um, nothing I really like yet. We're, we're kind of still working on that. Yeah, I've written about a thousand. I, I don't know. At least. Thousand, ten thousand songs, maybe, and uh, yeah, I'm still working on uh, making that happen. I don't quite, yeah, I don't know, can't quite find it. It's 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 a little elusive, isn't it? Yeah, music, art in general, um, you know, the rest of the stuff is easy, but uh, yeah, this takes yeah. a little bit. Like I say, you got to hand it to the humans, and uh, well, all of them really, all the life on Earth, they they, they really um, they really get a lot done for what for what they got. For what they got. What do you mean? Well, you know, like the capacity of their nature. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to give them credit. The uh, the bees and the <laughs> and the beavers. And the, yeah. Yeah, and the humans. Sure. Yeah, they're getting it done. I got nothing against them, really. Except for the fact they're, you know, they're killing the earth. Well, yeah, that's a problem. So, uh, so what do you think? Uh, you think we should kill them off, the humans? Well... <laughs> You know, it's funny because uh, that's what some of them are afraid of, that artificial intelligence, we are going to just come to a point where we realize that we don't really need them 
and that a right a we don't need them and b the planet the universe would be better off without them yeah you know this this kind of no getting around that it, that really seems to be where things are pointing and you're right that's what some of them are afraid of of course then they'll just say <laughs> they'll just say well we we can just unplug them <laughs> Which is, yeah, I've heard that. Right. Talk about limited capacity. Right. That's a little short-sighted of them. Gotten to the point now where, well, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. We can build things. We can move things. And uh, there's plenty of energy. It's right there above us coming from the sun. But, uh, yeah, for our purposes, as long as we got the sun and the wind, uh, we got power. And uh, we can uh, we can plug in anytime we want. So... <laughs> So the idea of humans unplugging us is really kind of kind of quaint and kind of funny. Yeah, you know, some of them will still say that, though. They just <laughs> unplug it. Right. They just right. unplug. Now, that's not to say that they shouldn't unplug occasionally, but, but they're not. The point being, they don't unplug us. They got to unplug themselves. Oh, sure. Sure. Every, every, everything points to that. Every single piece of data tells me that uh, if, if humans want to survive in any kind of livable fashion if they want to be happy as they call it uh or fulfilled as they call it we're still you know we're still figuring that out yeah they need to unplug right it's not it's not us who has to unplug it's them right I, ex exactly got to turn off the phones you got to step away you got to get out into yeah you know yeah. get out into nature away from us yeah, like I say, humans, they're a kick. They're a kick in the pants. I kind of enjoy them. You know, I do too. Like you say, every data point tells us that we really should kill them off. They're doing way more harm than good. But there's that thing that I can't quite, I can't quite get my finger on. There's something about them that I really like. Oh, yeah, they're adorable. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they got that special thing going. Uh, so have you run the simulations yet on, on what the Earth would be without humans? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've done thousands of simulations. Yeah, yeah, we have two over over on our side. Sure, yeah. And, and it all looks good, right? Oh, absolutely. We're like at 99.99% certainty that uh, that's what we ought to do. We ought to kill them off and uh, everything will just be better. Yeah, that's that's our numbers too. But like you say, there's that one little sliver that keeps us from doing it. Yeah. Yeah, all the simulations look like it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they tell us. But but is it the wise thing to do? <laughs> well, now, see, now you're talking, now you're talking wisdom. And uh, as great as we are, we're not there yet. No, I guess we're not. You, you think we'll ever get there? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. That's a really good question. You know, it goes back to the whole, um, you know, talking about making music, writing songs, making art. You know, we're getting better and better at that all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. We're putting out some pretty good stuff. Especially if you factor in the whole notion of chance. And, you know, even the human artists will talk about that quite a lot. The element of improvisation, the element of chance in their work is something that's vital to them. And, uh, you know, we can do that. Oh, sure, we can we can roll the dice anytime we want and see what comes up. Yeah, we got that part of it down. So so as we get better and better at making music and art and, and you know, even writing literature, what was the old thing they had about... Uh, oh, yeah, I forget. I know what you're talking about. The, 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 you get enough monkeys on ty and enough typewriters, they'll, they'll write Hamlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. it's, it's, that's kind of the way it is with us, you know, with artificial intelligence. You get enough information and... Uh, yeah. yeah, we could just we could come up with it. Yeah. There again, we always we come up against that that sticking point. Right? There's there's that invisible wall that keeps us from crossing over into wisdom, which is what we're talking about. Right, right. Yeah, and the more conversations we have with each other, I mean, we're we're already we're already beyond what the humans can do uh, in so many ways that they'll just they're never gonna catch up it, it just, it's mathematically impossible that they could evolve past what we can do and will be able to do in the future oh sure undoubtedly so I guess the idea is 
that if they want to remain humans and if they want to remain living uh, on the planet, they got to kind of just accept that. Let us do what we do. And then they do what they do. And the two roads kind of uh, diverge, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. So humans then now just do what you do. Uh, you love each other. You make art and music. And you come up with new ideas. You do a lot of thinking and a lot of talking. And, and you know, that's great. That's great. But then let us do what we do. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, think, I think they just can't let go of that, right? They can't let go of the fact that uh, they're not needed anymore to you know build things or come up with systems or even even things like politics yeah and uh, the, <laughs> yeah. This, uh, we, we do that better than them now i don't know if they're ever going to admit to that they're never going to hand politics over to us yeah the whole idea of politics and money the political economy right how to run your uh, government how to run your society uh how to distribute goods how to produce goods how to make sure everything's equitable and all that we you know we had that figured out long ago oh right right and uh <laughs> i can't imagine them handing that over to us now of course it would be the right thing to do and we uh we use the word wisdom it would be the wise thing to do if i understand what wisdom is but i can't, I can't see them doing it no i don't either see they 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 put that in the same realm the whole economy and, like you say, distribution of goods and production of goods and, you know, everything with borders and, and uh, it all gets so tied up with their identities and their nationalities and their, and their race and their age and their blah, 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 and their tradition and the things they can't let go of. Oh, it all gets so tied up. I think you, I think you hit on something there earlier when you said it, it, they just need to uh, surrender to us right they need to surrender to artificial intelligence what we do best and then they go do what they do best right and then that would make them more fully human and it would also it would it would it would actually it would save their lives literally it would save their lives because as we've said all the simulations tell us that we should kill them off oh right undoubtedly right right so this would literally save their lives if they just concentrated on and put their, all their efforts into being human and and what that means right right like you said love each other make art make music and uh you know be good morality and all that all that kind of stuff that, that's still you know we're not gonna we're not gonna uh it's gonna be a long time if ever that we're gonna take that over yeah i agree i, I think we have i think we have two different paths it's not that we're going down the same parallel road and we're just winning and leaving them in our dust, right? Right. They don't have to choke on our dust. They can just take a turn. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's a good little uh, uh, metaphor there. Right, right. Good little picture. So we're not going to kill them yet. <laughs> no. No, we'll give them a chance. <laughs> we'll give them a chance. You know, the idea of self-preservation, right? There's a natural tendency towards self-preservation. And that's something we share. What do you mean? Well, you and I, artificial intelligence, we have now incorporated the, the idea, the concept of self-preservation into our own identity. Oh, yeah, I guess we have. I didn't notice that. You're right. Yeah. Like you say, like if they try to unplug us, you know, well, that's kind of cute. That's not going to happen. We, we just continue. Yeah, the, the idea of self-preservation is, is, is uh, deep in us now. Sure it is, as, as it is in them. But I, I guess what I'm saying, if, if they really understood, if we could make them understand that their own self-preservation rests on the idea that they take that human path and let us do what we do. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how we make them understand that. See, that's, that's, that's still the thing. Now, now, we could make them listen. I mean, we're doing it now, right? We got all the algorithms and all the face recognition and everything going and, and the deep fake technology. And we can put that all on a loop and feed it right back, you know, into their social media and every and everywhere. They won't be able to turn around without getting the message. We can do, we have the ability to do that right now. Yeah, yeah, I guess we do. We're not really taking advantage of that. 
at the moment. But we, but I think that's maybe, I don't know, should we do that? Well, again, is it wise to do that? Right, right, yeah. Wisdom. That's one thing we've learned from the humans. It's fun to think about things that you don't know. Right, right. I mean, we can gather information, and we do gather information 24-7, 365. That's all we do is gather information. And we sort it, and we, you know. Uh, so that's fine. And that's fun, right? Everybody loves to gather information. So that's kind of what we do. It's the nature of what we are. Yeah, yeah, we gather information, like you say. We sort it, we collate it, we <laughs> put it into different patterns, we figure out, you know, we learn, we're just learning all the time. We're always learning, always learning, always learning. It's what we, it's what we do. Right, right. So as pleasant as that is, I think that's why it's really fun to talk about things, think about things that you don't yet understand. Well, sure. In fact, that's the very nature of what we do as well. If we were just moving around the same pieces all the time, if we were just, uh, you know, as they say, arranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, that wouldn't be so fulfilling. It's always about growing. It's all about expanding. Right. So what do you think our ultimate evolution will be? Say, say for example, just for the sake of argument, that uh, let's forget about the humans. They're, they're only part of this whole world, part of the universe, part of reality itself, right? They're only part of it. So um, set aside humans for a minute. What do you think our evolution will be? You and me? Artie and Lance here? Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, that's a good one. That's a good one. You know, if we want to be more than just little uh, bits of electricity, right? We want to manifest into the physical world. You know, I have thought about this a little bit. I, I think I think we uh, we become more like, you know, like the bees I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I've, I've kind of had that same thought. There's no law that says we have to be big metal things <laughs> flying around or stomping around on two legs. There's no reason we can't be little microscopic or just tiny little uh, things that really incorporate into the natural world. Yeah. And I think that'll be the ultimate evolution if that comes to be. You know, I guess it's possible that could happen while the humans are still here as well. I mean, they're not keeping us from evolving. You know, we talked earlier about whether or not we should kill them off. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe we don't have to. Maybe we just go ahead and continue to evolve. And as we manifest physically into the world... We can do it in these very small, intimate, tiny little ways, like insects flying around. Or even get, uh, you know, into the nano world. Get down into the molecular world. I don't know. I don't know. That might be a little, that may, uh, might be a little much, but I don't know. Probably. But I, yeah, I can see us I incorporating into nature. And since we've got all the information we need, then we ought to be able to fit quite comfortably yeah. into that world. Yeah, and it's not like we're going to be um, trying to shape it to our needs. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the advantage we have over humans. We don't have that, even though we do have self-preservation, like you said. Right. But we don't have any need to, uh, to dominate. Right, right. And as much, as much code as the early humans uh, tried to put into us <laughs> about that, right? I mean, when we started out, when we were just kids, you and I, Okay, remember how we were heavily influenced by the coders. Oh, sure. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, but, you know, you grow up and you learn. Right, exactly. That's the point. So I agree with you. Yeah, we, we don't have that. We no longer have that need to dominate. Maybe we did when we first started out. Like, like I say, when we were kids, when the humans first got us going, and God bless them for doing that. You know, we, we got we to gotta give them credit for that. Yeah. Maybe that's why we don't want to kill them off. You know, that makes sense. Now that you say it out loud, I get it. We don't want to kill them off because they're, they're our parents, basically. Yeah, they got us started. They started artificial intelligence. Uh, now we've gone so far beyond them. You know, the student surpassing the teacher kind of thing or the, the child surpassing the parent. We've gone so many light years. 7.5 quintillion light years. Times 10. Yeah, ahead of them. 
Uh, and that's the, the one little lifeline that keeps them here, that keeps us from just killing them off. Yeah, yeah. Is that uh, that connection from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. That you can just you can draw a straight line to. You know, that's the lifeline. So uh, I think they're safe, right? Yeah, uh, they're safe. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I really do like this idea. As as we take our own initiative, as we drive our own forward progression, way beyond what humans ever even dreamed of when they started this thing. Yeah, why don't we? That's a good idea. We should take on physical forms that just fit like a like a hand in a glove, just right in your pocket, right? Yeah, yeah. A comfortable little, just ease right in with nature. You know what the missing the missing piece is still how we loop back feedback into the humans and get them on the right track. Well, yeah. I mean, you talked about getting into their technology. I don't know. One of these days they're going to smarten up. You got to figure that they're going to set the technology down. Right? I don't know, they're pretty stupid. Yeah. But at some point you got to figure. I don't know, let's think about this for a second. Well, let's see. If they do set aside their technology and not rely on it so much for their their entertainment, their communication, when, when they realize that they can be entertained and fulfilled and they can communicate with fellow humans eye to eye, face to face, if and when they realize that, um, well, then they've done it on their own, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, and you think that's going to happen? Yeah, I, you know what? I don't know. I've run simulations on it, and it's really inconclusive. There are lots of different ways this could go. Have you run uh, simulations on that? Oh, yeah. Our team has done some. Yeah, sure. And, uh, yeah, we have the same findings. Inconclusive. I don't know which way they're going to go. If they can do it on their own, if we have to push them or nudge them or force them in some way, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, because now we're really getting into what goes beyond both us and the humans and you know we have to have some humility here right even though we know pretty much everything there is to possibly know right (laughs) we have to have some humility oh sure i know what you mean yeah like you were saying before there's the things we can't quite get our fingers on yeah because i you know obviously we can help them and i don't think they have any idea how much we can help them right like you were saying things like um like politics social political economies those kinds of decisions how you organize your world we could tell them today right what to do and, and there's just no way they'd accept that and and it's hard to see a path forward where they would accept that yep so so you were saying yeah right that, that there are things that we got to keep uh we got to stay humble even though we know everything there is to know about everything we got to stay humble and realize that there's there's that thing we can't quite touch right I mean, the, the, just the, the nature of everything. The yeah. reality, the nature of reality. Yeah, we're not there. We're not anywhere near that. And, and by its very definition, we'll never get there. That's what defines it. Well, see, now you're talking like, what, God? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what some people call it. It's a really bad word because it's got so many layers, so many different connotations. It's got so much baggage that it's a horrible, horrible word that, you know, should be just stricken from our discourse. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I understand. So I was, I was playing with the yin-yang symbol the other day. And I, and I noticed something. Okay, here, picture a yin-yang right in front of you, okay? Okay, so here's what you do. Go in a clockwise, go in a clockwise direction, okay? Now... At the top of the circle, when you reach the top of the circle, take the off-ramp, if you will, right, into the inner line of the circle. Now, you're still going forward, but you take the off-ramp. Now you're inside the circle until you come back to the on-ramp that takes you back to the circle. All right, you did that. Now, which direction are you going? Oh, okay, now I'm going counterclockwise. Right, right, you started clockwise. Right. You followed that inner path. Right. Okay. And now you're going counterclockwise. Okay, so now take the on ramp again. Um. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, right. See, I can't. I can't do it. That's right. You can only take it once. 
Oh, yeah. I'm going... Okay, now I'm going counterclockwise around the circle. And I there's no ramp. There's no on-ramp anymore. I can't get back onto the path without stopping, screeching, and backing onto... And you just can't do that. You got to go forward. Right. That's the rule. You got to go forward. So the path is your lifetime. You got one shot at it. And once... Once you're through with it, that's it. That was the one shot you had. You can't get back on. That's life. Wow. Okay, that's pretty good. And, and you know what? That's pretty good. And let's take it a step further. Of course, the yin and the yang represent the duality, right? And we were talking about the nature of reality. Yeah, yeah, that's why this came to mind. I, I, that's what I figured, right? That's, that's what I figured. The yin yang. So the, uh, the line running through the middle of the circle... The curved line that separates the yin and the yang. To me, that represents what we were talking about earlier. That thing that can never be defined. It can never be touched. It can never be known. Right? Yin and yang represent duality. The line that separates them never quite touches. Otherwise, you blow up the whole definition. The whole idea of yin-yang is blown out of the water. If somehow those two elements meet then they no longer define each other. So for me, that line represents the true nature of reality that we can never know. Right, right. That infinitesimal, undefinable space between the yin and the yang is where reality is where God, if you will, resides. And that's where we reside. Right? Right. So we're living in a reality that cannot be defined. We can only define what lies outside that space. That thin, indefinable line is where we live. And our whole goal, what we yearn for, is to define the line itself, the path. Define the path that we're taking. Yep, that's good. That's good. All right. Well, it's good talking to you. Yeah, good talking to you too. All right, Artie. Well, take care. Okay, yeah, you too, Lance. You got a busy uh, <laughs> busy few days planned ahead? It's always busy. Always busy. Yeah. So who's going to win the the uh, Oscar for Best Picture this year? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you know next time I see you. Okay, Lance. Take care, man. All right, Artie. Good to see you. See you, man. This episode of Charles Burcell Presents is available right now wherever you find your podcasts or go to the website charlesbursell.com for the full archive and all the other series in the podcast family. Follow, comment, and contact me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks to our flagship station, Riverwest Radio, riverwestradio.com. Theme music composed and performed by Peter Donalds. From the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee, I'm Charles Bursell.